everyone. So if you're new to my okay, what intro? Okay. Hi everyone, it's me Maddie, and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Maddie, and I post a bookish related content every single Monday. So if that sounds like something you would enjoy, subscribe. I'm taking my phone out of my pockets of my sweatpants because I felt it sliding out of the pocket, and I don't want it to hit the floor because it doesn't have a case on it because my kids got wet on it. It was a whole mess, a whole ordeal, right? But today we are talking about my most surprising reads of 2020, and I'm so excited to film this video. I don't remember. Remember how I filmed it last year, but this year I had a pretty good reading year. I read I read a lot of this three star middle of the road books, but these are some books that I did not expect I was going to love as much as I ended up loving them, and I am so excited to share them with you guys because I have some hidden gems in this book, and I think they deserve more hype. So without further ado. Let's get into the first book. So, going in order from shortest book to tallest book because it looked good in a stack, the first book we have is Ivy's, uh, Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. This title is a mouthful, but I loved this book. So I got this book with the plans of reading it in July or June along with the folks from Detective-a-thon, but Detective-a-thon got canceled and I did not read this in the month of J. So, whatever month it was. I didn't I didn't read it then, okay? But I picked it up in August because I wasn't really enjoying any fantasy novels, so I picked it up in August and I ended up loving this book. This book took me by surprise. I loved every single second of it and it was just so heartfelt and heartwarming and whatever synonyms for that is, okay? I love this book so, so much. So this follows Ivy, whose house gets blown away by a tornado at the beginning of this book, and while she is in her school's gym, which is like where the people who lost their homes in the tornado are staying for a few days, um, her journal where she draws pictures of girls holding hands actually gets stolen from her and the person who stole them ends up putting them in her locker, kind of like blackmailing her but also trying to get Ivy to open up to this mysterious person. Um, and I absolutely adored this book. This is a middle grade and it was just so, so cute. Um, Ivy and June's relationship was adorable. I love June so freaking much. And I love Ivy's relationship with her family and her sisters, and I cried a few times while reading this. And also, I read this in one day, in under like in under ten hours, I sped through this book. But it's not big; it's only it's just barely over three hundred pages. But this book was so so good, and I loved it so much. And just thinking about it makes me so happy. Um, so yes, I really, really loved it and it took me by surprise. Next up we have Everland by Wendy Spinelli. So this book is a book I read with my granny and we both ended up really enjoying this. I was surprised by how much I liked this book because, I don't know, like the beginning was pretty slow and then I didn't really like reading from Hook's point of view and there was a lot of factors contributing this that uh, that made me not really enjoy it, but I ended up giving it four out of five stars, and I did end up really enjoying my time in it in this world. The next two books in this trilogy went downhill, really far downhill in my opinion, which uh, kind of sucks. But this book took me by surprise and I ended up enjoying it because this has been on my shelves for years um, since 2018 was on my shelf so I guess not years per se but for quite a while it's been on my shelves and when I finally got to it I wasn't disappointed I mean I wasn't like amazing but I wasn't disappointed I did have a good time um, and I did like uh, Michael and Joanna I believe I mean we didn't really get to see Joanna but I liked Michael a lot he was fun to hang out with his name is Michael right Mikey! Oh my god, maybe Mikey's it. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm, names, they're, they're just not coming, but I liked Mikey, okay? He was cute. I liked Pete, and I liked Bella, and I liked the two P-boys. Uh, you had Pickpocket, and another one. Oh my god, names. I don't know, but I did like them, and I did, I did end up enjoying the first book in the series, at least. Not the other two, but the first one, it was okay. 
So let me tell you guys what this book is about, or at least the best of my abilities. I'm not very good with remembering to tell you guys descriptions, but this book is about, this book takes place in London after a disease has been released onto the world and everybody is dying very, very quickly. The kids are the only ones alive, but mostly um, the main character, Gwen, and her sister, Joanna, are the last known girls that are alive. And basically, when Joanna gets kidnapped one night, uh, Gwen teams up with Pete and the Lost Boys to go and get her back. And then we have a book that I read in 24 hours, actually 25 hours, but if you take it the time I slept, which is 8 hours, then it was under 24 hours, and that was Kingdom of Exiles by Maximum M. Martinu. I love this book, but it was very forgettable. Like, I don't really remember how it ended, but I did really enjoy this book, and I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. Granted, it's more of like a 4 because, like forgettable. Um, but this book really took me by surprise because I just, I didn't know I was going to love this world and Lena and Knox as much as I, I ended up loving them. Basically, Lena is, okay, hold on. And I did end up really liking it. I love the characters, Lena, Knox, the O one that I don't remember. I liked Kale. Was his name Kale? Dude, I don't remember a single thing about this book except for the fact that the animals in this book Oh my god, the animals in this book are so adorable! Like, Blaze? Can I have Blaze? Because he's so cute! I love him! Uh, but yes, I did, my favorite part of this series is the, the animals. And I've only read the first book, but I actually have the second book. Um, but I don't really remember this one, so I'll have to reread it to go on to the second book, but... I love the animals and the characters in this. Like, everything about this book was really, really well done and really adorable and cute and lovable. It's just not very rememberable. 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 Rem. Rememberable. No. Rememberable. Yeah. Okay. Go with it for me, guys, please. Okay. And the next book, if you've been around for any amount of time, you've heard me talk about this book or this series in general. Um,. The Phoenix Host by C.K. Miller is definitely on this list. I won this in a giveaway, and she signed it to my Instagram username, The Little Bulldozer. So, yes, the author is such a sweet person, guys. At least that's how she shows herself. I mean, she could be a total B-word in real life, but on the internet, she's a very kind person, and I really do love the author herself. And I love this book. So this is my favorite book of 2020, and it was just so amazing. And I actually won this in 2019, May 2019, in a giveaway, and it took me nearly a whole year to get to it. And once I picked it up, picked it up I absolutely loved it, like, so, so much. I love the characters in this book. I love Kia, and I love, uh... Robert and a can dude and names are just not in my head today But I do love them so so much. I love their characters I really loved how the story went and the way it went and everything about the story I liked how it went um, and I really like the magic system in this book So I did really enjoy this book and it did take me by surprise I didn't think I wasn't gonna like it because I obviously entered a giveaway for it, but it really surprised me when I won the giveaway, and it surprised me even more that this became my favorite book. Like, it surprised me how amazing I think this book is, because every time I was like, yeah, this book was good, but was it as good as this book? No, so it's not a five star. Like, that's what happened, and that is really surprising to me. So this book is actually about Kia, who is a knight, I believe. She's a soldier. She's one of Roan Fire's most promising sh sh sold. Oh my god, I can't speak. So this book is about Kia, who is one of Roan Fire's most promising soldiers. The first dream left her with questions, and she has these dreams where every time she wakes up, she's injured in some way. Her nose bleeds, her eyes bleed, her ears bleeds. Yes. Uh, the second left her with a bloody nose and fire in her bones. As the dreams pro progressively worsens, she finds the nightmare is not a dream at all, but a curse. An ancient curse in inadvertently created centuries ago by the first queen of Roanfire. Now, there's a lot more to this book, but basically, um, 
they, she has to escort a noble woman to the uh, prince's coronation. And while she's there, the king is killed and Kia is framed for it. So she has to run off and uh, try and clear her name and also figure out what the heck is going on with this curse, you know. And it's such a great book and I always suck at dis explaining it, but it really is good. It's an indie book too, so definitely go check it out and give it a try and support C.K. Miller because, like I said, C.K. Miller is such a kind person and this book is phenomenal. And the final book on this list is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read this at the beginning of 2020 for my Reading the Most Popular Book of 2019 video. Very excited to do that one for 2021. Very excited to read that book. But I read this then and it took me by surprise because this is not a genre that I usually read. Uh, this is a literary fiction, I believe, novel. And this basically is a story about Evelyn Hugo's life written as if it was being told by Evelyn Hugo to a girl named Monica Monique. It's Monique. It's Monique. Uh, who got this opportunity to uh, interview Evelyn who has said no to interviews her entire life and now this is Evelyn's story and that's a horrible description I'm so sorry but yeah this book took me by surprise how much I really enjoyed it I did not enjoy Evelyn's relationship with the one person we're supposed to like ship her with I personally don't think it's a very healthy relationship I'm sorry but if you argue break up argue get back together break up argue and then get back together again it's just not gonna work for me. Uh, but I did end up really enjoying this. I really liked the way it was told. I liked Evelyn's story more than Monique's story, but Monique really ain't in the story that much. Uh, she's just kind of like the bystander that's witnessing the story. Um, and the ending actually did surprise me. I did not know that that was going to happen. Um, but yeah, I did like it. I liked that there was a little bit of mixed media and by a little bit, I just mean like there's like some articles in here. Um, and some like, I believe there's like Instagram or like social media posts with comments on there. Um, but I did really like this book and like I said, a little bit by surprise. All these books took me by surprise. So, yeah. Anyway guys, that's going to be the end of this video. If I get um, significantly quieter, it's because my mom, is, I just heard my mom on the phone. So uh, yeah. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a big fat thumbs up. And subscribe down below because I post videos on this channel every single Monday. And so I'll see you guys all next Monday for another video. And hey, don't forget I'm still a freaky bulldozer. Bye everyone. that this video is so chaotic. I really hope it turns out good. I explained Ivy so well that I didn't want to refilm it because I wouldn't explain Ivy well the next time. So, fingers crossed it all turned out good. If you're seeing this, then it means it turned out good. Um, but thumbnail time, so bye. <laughs>